I'm starting now. Okay. There you go. Hi everyone, I'm back. So today we're going to have a conversation, an interesting conversation on the adoptification bias, more specifically, the adoptification of black children. Uh, I'm back with Isa. You've seen her in other discussions with me. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing good. I'm doing good. So I'm, I'm excited to start the conversation. It's a very interesting conversation, a very important conversation because it's something uh, I believe adoptification goes hand in hand with racism. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna I'm gonna start with a with a definition, basically I have to say basic definition. But uh, the adoptation of, of black children, adoptation bias, is a form of prejudice where black children are treated as being more mature than they actually are. So uh, yeah, this kind of conversation is always like no, you know, people like when they listen to that, they get on the defense. Because it then says that, you know, somebody maybe in the group may have participated in this form of violence, right? Uh, so one, so I think for me, it started historically. For example, when we look at Emmett Till, how, you know, he, uh, I think it was Carolyn Burnett, who said that, you know, he, you know, he, um, he flirted, he flirted with her and everything, which then led to him getting murdered by two adult men, you know? Uh, he was only 14, right? So when you see that, that's like, that's like an extreme case, of course. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know how to begin. So I would say, have you ever, in your childhood, we begin, have you ever felt as if, and it could be yes, could be no, huh? as if you were being treated as an adult. Oh, yeah. Um, I would say I have, like, lots of examples that come to mind for me, but um, I would say it's, um, it's sad seeing and trying to remember all the times that I have not been given the privilege to be seen as a child or even not a child but like as a person because even to tie in this entire conversation like black people already are not seen as human beings we're not given um that humanness and like that uh just yeah to be seen as human beings in the way other people are that's just like the just how insidious you know anti-blackness yeah. operates and when you view people and you adultify children like it, it's had like um you know it it, re it really takes a toll on you as, as a child um i guess like to give other examples outside of me i kind of think about like the whole um r kelly trial situation um yeah. like with uh, the jury and how some of them did not you know want to find him guilty because the young girls they said well um, they knew what they were doing. Um, they just wanted attention or they were quote unquote fast for their age. And like just all these things to try to like blame them um, when there's just no, uh, it's just like how, like just how people view black children in general um, seems as if like uh, black children have to know everything. And like yeah. they, they don't even have agency over how they're viewed and perceived by other people. And like the way white children can be <laughs> called children at like even 20 yeah. years old is really wild. But like someone who could be like 14 is called like a man. Um, it's just, it's, it's so strange. Um, but some examples from like my family or like relatives of mine, um, my little cousin, he he was like in grade um, grade five or six, and like he uh, he kind of had like a a tantrum at school, and he was just like you know he was throwing things, he was really angry, and um, the school called like five or six <laughs> police officers, and they all came to try to hold him down, and it's just like um, 
it's definitely a bigger question as to what is it exactly that you know makes white people so fearful of blackness and black children um because it's just like how can grown adults be so afraid of a child um and how can they um feel like just someone can overpower them even like they're in a position like being a police officer and it's just um I would say like the adultification of black children really is so it's so deep and it's so sad to see because um this is only our experience and like in some cases I think like you said like people want to deny that it exists because like they also probably have been complicit in it um and yeah like for me I think uh just the adultification impacts like um, children, you know, within just like how the police interact with us, how teachers interact with us, um, how like aside from even those things, how like um, other people, like adults interact with um, children in like different settings. It's really, uh, yeah, it's just like really sad to see and really uh just deep it and think about it yeah no, because I, I i remember when i was um i think i was held was i i must have been 12 or 13 and uh my my twin brother and i we had a friend and uh we would see that friend you know at the park you know she she was like a very nice person and then one day she can i don't know what ha what happened i still told this dad I don't know what happened she i think the dad came to us and then said where is my daughter mm -hmm. and we, we told us what's going on did she disappear did she run away uh what's going on you know and then he said, if my daughter does not come back, I'm going to blame it on you too. I'm going to call the police. I'm going to blame it on you too. And I remember just like my, my twin brother and I, we, you know, as good African ch uh, kids, you know, you know, don't talk back to an adult. You know, it's like, you know, you just let him talk and let him be, you know. But was, and when I look back, I'm like, you would call the police on us on something you you don't know. Mm -hmm. You think you did something, and you, you you as a grown man think you can talk to young children that way, right? Yeah. And it's just just when you say like the way adults you know interact with black children sometimes it's it's interesting and it's 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 difficult to um when I was saying it's difficult for people to believe because it's it's. As you say, it's insidious, right? It's not. It's not an attack that is straight on. It's not. You are a black child. I will attack you because you know I see you as an adult. You know, I. I think it's it's difficult for for people to understand this kind of attack because, as I said, uh, I believe that uh, the adultification of black children and racism go hand in hand. Yeah. So. It, so it, I think it just mixes on this, you know, on all of this. So you, you, so you can't really, you know, you can't really, you know, know what it is exactly. But you can look at studies. For example, I think it's in uh, in, in schools. We see that black girls are um, are more likely. Um, oh, I had the study and I it was in my mind. I totally forgot. But are more likely to be kicked out of school or taken home for doing something a white girl would do, mm -hmm. you know? And I was, I was stunned, I was like, wow. When I didn't know about the adultification bias, of course, I was, I was really stunned, I was like, why, how come? How can, what does that mean, you know? And then mm -hmm. when you know that black, when you know that black children are more likely to be, uh, to be taken out of school, like you were saying with your, with your cousin, right? The police came, like you know, uh, you're a teacher. You could talk to the you could talk to the, to the child, or even if you want to, get yeah. him out of the, school, the class. I don't know, but calling the police. And we've seen lots of videos of, especially when it comes with the police force, where they 
with um I don't know if you remember there was a, a young a black girl. I was I don't know where it was, it was somewhere in the States. And uh, she um she something had happened and the cop came in her class and she was talking back to the cop and the cop literally took a chair and flipped it, throwing the black girl to the ground. And I was and I remember telling you why call the police? You know, yeah. as a teacher, you would know that, you know, if the kid is doing like you talk first, right? But they're so quick on dialing 911. <laughs> so yeah. quick, you know? And that's why I'm, I'm looking at the adultification of, of black children once more, you know? Um, and uh, where can we go? Where can I say this? Um, I, you know, it's difficult because then we don't know, like, how... Would you say then that, of course, I'm, I'm asking you the question, I already know the answer, right? But uh, would, you, would you say that the adoptation of black children and racism are linked to the point that we don't know how to make other people understand what it is? Um, I would view adultification as like um, part of like the branch of racism. Like racism is like the tree. And like, and you know, the adultification of children is kind of just like one of the branches of it. Um, also, even a branch of anti-blackness as well. Um, and like, I think the adultification of black children also, um, with the recent case of um, Makia Bryant, um, and how like adultification can also even be linked to you know fat phobia, um, and how because she was a big child. Um, people like just the language they use around her death and how they um how they just didn't see her again as a child and how um the way that people you know use the word woman instead of girl or so child and it's um and just the fact that um people didn't uh just how like she, it was brought up that she had a, I think a knife or something. And it's like, yeah. like no one thought, oh, this is a child trying to protect herself against other adults, you know? Yeah. And just even like her interaction with the police, again, they didn't see her as a child. Clearly, like amongst, if she is around two other adult women, there's a power dynamic there. Obviously, yeah. a child has a knife and is using it against them, it's to protect herself. And they would see that scenario if she was white, obviously, but um, because she's black and because she was a fat child and because she, um, yeah, just for, because of both of those things, they didn't see her as someone that needed to be protected. Um, and even um, the ways that, uh, like specifically with young black girls, um, if your body is shaped a, a certain way, people will then also view you as an adult, which is also highly problematic. Like the way that um, if you're developed in other areas and the way your white counterparts might not be. Um, and on top of that, because you're a black woman and the way that yeah. black women's bodies are already hypersexualized, it's just yeah, as a child to get that sort of interaction with other adults um and unfortunately another big thing that like young black girls have to deal with is feeling shame of the body that they have and to like yeah. be told that they need to do more to not get attention and to not try to um like yeah it's just shame put on them to try to um hide their body and so that they aren't um trying to you know, um, I don't know what the word for it, but it's just the blame is always put on the child and never on the fact that people are, are intentionally hypersexualizing a child based on their own perceptions of that person. And it's yeah. just children being taught, you know, that they have to um, do all these things for a body that they just happen to be born with. Um, yeah. They have to change how they act, how they 
um, yeah, how they act, how they walk, how they dress, how they speak, and all these things. And it's just really ridiculous. Like, even in, like, African households, which you might know sometimes, um, girls will be told they need to change if guests come over. And it's like, no one really thinks about, like, what does that mean? Like, you have to change clothes because guests are coming over. And it's never, like, hmm, like, why is it that a child has to change their clothes because guests are coming over. It's like the attention is never brought into what type of people are you bringing to your house if your child can't even wear simple clothes, you know? Like, I think, like, the conversation always tends to just end right there, like putting the blame on the child um, so that they, you know, don't, uh, attract any wrong attention. Yeah, it's true. Um, again, like you were saying, the hypersexualization of young black girls, right? Uh, from the way they walk, from their hair to. Yeah. Um, um, I remember the story I told you with uh, when I was in class, and and then a black a black girl was said was told to go in the back of the class because she has she had she had an afro, mm -hmm. you know, and then the other another child came in front, right? I, again, I don't know if if that could be viewed as adultification, but if we look at the hyper, you know, the, the way we we um, we control. Um, it could be no. It could be just the adultification fact because you know. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I would say it could be just adultification, right? Be. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, like it could be. Um, because again, it's like, why is she telling a child? Um, she's you know, um, distracting the other students because of her hair, you know, hair. and that can definitely be tied into um adultification because how can a child cause so much distraction in a classroom um yeah, that other students yeah, yeah. Like other students can't pay attention to the teacher it's uh it's really yeah like it's connected it's connected yeah and uh yeah that's why we, we, you were saying about you know in, in in the household and and um like yes, hypersexualization. sexualization it's it, it's 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 triggering, right? All those yeah. words. It's very triggering because as black children, you when I was young, I would see things that did not make sense to me mm -hmm. in the way I was talked to and the way I was, you know, uh, in the way that you know the, the the police would come up to me, for example, you know. And I think, you know, I used to play the double bass when I was young and I had, you know, my, my instrument, right? And I remember those things happened to me two or three times where they would come, like, police officers would be in our school, or, you know, would come after, they would come around the school after, you know, the, the day was done. They would be around the school and they would, you know, talk to children. And I was the only kid with, you know, I had my friends that you know my white counterpart white counterparts uh, students that were with me and they would always ask me to open up my case to view what was in the case you know mm -hmm. it was an instrument but they, they, they never asked you know the other children right to open up their case so you see how the police force automatically sees black children as threats yeah you know and you always have to, you know, explain of this is my case, you know? And sometimes you have to understand, you have to grow, you're forced to grow faster, right? Mm -hmm. Than other, other, other children, right? And it's, it's difficult for other people to understand because yeah. as a kid, you, for, for example, as a girl, like you, review your body and then but you're a kid why why as a kid you have to think about how your body is you yeah. know it's 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 violent i find it to be very violent it's it's very violent and like um just like while you're talking i just remember um this woman um it's a white woman she has mixed kids 
and she was talking about how she doesn't um she tells her like children like to avoid white people because she doesn't trust oh. yeah she doesn't trust she doesn't trust white people around her children because she knows how white people are and that like really stuck with me because i just thought about how um that's just how like deep racism is like even though she you know has mixed children she already has a sense of how white people view mixed children or any child that looks black and that just really spoke volumes about how like the innocence and the humanity and like just you to be seen as a person is very much defined on your the color of your skin anyone that is white is deemed as a person and a human being and anything that um is the opposite of that is not a human being and not a child and i just thought about how like what like what does that mean to tell your child that um you can't trust people that look like me like i think that's like i just thought i mean it makes sense because um even like um just the with anyone who is in proximity or in association to blackness already they are stripped of that humanity and that ability to claim being a human being and to not be adultified and like i think it's just really sad that like children have to live that way and yes. i'm not sure if you saw but i reposted this poem written by um these children and this was in response to a 13 year old child that was killed in the us i think it was new york and the kids were talking about how um you know why um why they hated so much it was like um the poems written by black and brown children and they were talking about like why are we hated so much and something they said that really made me sad was how um um they said something about like uh maybe we could change the world if we lived long enough you know mm. like that's like that's so sad to me that like children have to that's like cuz white children do not say things like that it is not in their mind to say things like if we had the chance to live long enough they don't think about mm. things like that and they're also like they have the luxury to not live life like that they don't have to fear that their friend or family member or someone might die the next day because of the color of their skin. They don't have to think and they don't have to operate in fear like uh and just wherever they go, they don't have to think about well I survived today, you know? And just like all of that um all just the toll it takes on children to have to live every day um and trying to, you know, be optimistic and just the thing about you know racism itself is just like uh it takes away like um black children's ability to dream and to do other things that is not just centered on racism and just how insidious it is like um it takes away their chance to find things that they love doing to explore different hobbies to like find more who they are you know like to to like play an instrument to paint to sing or to do anything like to do a creative outlet like um black children aren't like purposely um not allowed to live in a world or to create a world that is not centered on racism and how they are dealt with It's like they are reminded of that every day. And I think it's just like um it's just like what can you do? You know, like as a child if if like you know that this is your life during your childhood and that it only escalates into adulthood. 
like yeah it's interesting what you say is really interesting it's such a it's sad that that uh, that poem you told me about it's really really sad um i um i've it's it's sad because, as you said, like I said before, you know, black children are forced to grow a bit faster, right? Um, because of these, um, sometimes, um, these, um, I'm trying to find the word, um, those attacks are just like, you know, just under the carpet. Um, I forgot how there's a word for it. Uh, it's okay, don't worry. So yeah, so so these attack, right? And it's it, so again, as we said before, like black children forced to uh, grow faster, right? And then, for example, because we, you know we're talking about we're just we're talking about, but we have examples. Like at the beginning, I was talking about Emma Till. Uh, you talked about Mikaya. Uh, there is also. Um, the, the 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 young kid that um, that was playing and the, those things we're talking about you know of course in in America right in the in the states right uh, the young kid who was playing with his toy gun and the cops came and saw the kid and automatically sh shot him uh, what was his name again um, I'm going to put the names um, during my you know when I'm going to do my um, no, with my editing, of course, right? So just to give, you know, um, yeah, just to just make sure that you know they are well represented and everything, right? But you have that that comes over and over and over again, and then you and then you look at all the things and you and you say, oh, there's a girl who was who, a cop came and then threw her, threw her off the um, a chair because she was misbehaving according to the teacher. Uh, your cousin, um, me when that, that man, me and my twin brother, when the man came up to us and said, I'm going to call the cops on you if my daughter doesn't come back. So you always, so as a young, as a young kid, you, you're always on this, have to be careful, have to be careful, have to be careful all the time, right? And that's where it becomes unfair. And that's where you see how the adultification bias, the adultification of black children becomes violence. With all those things that happen, it becomes, it, it, sometimes it's a young black kid getting shot or, you know, and when you look at the, the flip side, um, there's always, you know, an excuse, oh, a twi like you're saying, a 20-year-old, uh, a 20-year-old, you know, Caucasian child or Caucasian, uh, Caucasian, a Caucasian child even said, a 20-year-old Caucasian child. You see how... <laughs> <laughs> Just you like know, the you, language we're conditioned to use around white people and black people, it's, it's, it's wild. It's wild, yeah. And okay. on the first side, they're all viewed, you know, as kids. And, you know, uh, he was just a kid. Uh, you know, he, he was a kid. He made that mistake. He'll grow. He'll change. But that same luxury sometimes is not given to black children. Detentions, getting kicked out of schools. At a higher rate, and we see when we look at black girls um, getting shot, you know, all those things, and it's just, I think it's scary when you think about it. But again, I do feel that it's it's um, this is just we're, we're in a stage where you know, ra well, racism is still alive and it's still well, of course, right? Uh, but we're in a stage where we're discussing that form of racism. And as we're discussing it, we are view, we can actually see, we can actually point that this is what is happening to to young children, to black young children. I mean, back in back in the days when you know when you when you would hear a story of what black children had to do uh, at a young age uh, with young slavery or during colonization, the things that they had to do, the, the way they were viewed as as adults. We, 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 again, we go back to Emmett Till, you know, or um, the, uh, the, the first, the first kid to get, um, to get, uh, to get the death penalty was a, a black child. So, as, so if we look at all this in the history, we can then see how it makes sense now, because we didn't, we haven't dealt with, 
we have been given the luxury to deal with with all of this to create a, a change, right? And um, that's my next question. Do you think at some point, uh, can you see a change? Can you see things improving as we discuss about it now, if my question makes sense? It does. Um, to be honest, I, I can't say that I do. Um, okay. I know it like, sounds so pessimistic, but because um, the other day, um, I was talking to my friend about how, um, like, racism is going to take, um, it'll take we, we probably another 400 years till it's still be close enough to say we're in a post-racism, post-racism, post-racist society. Because, yeah. like, only, like, the fact that, you know, Prince Philip, who recently just died, like, he... Yeah was alive to see the independence of all the colonized countries. Like, yeah. like all the countries that gained independence are the same age as my parents. Like, it's like this, like anti-blackness and racism has been around for so long. And yeah. I think it won't even be in my lifetime and my kids' lifetime. It'll take forever for us to really live and envision a world that actually doesn't adult adultify like black children most because of just how insidious racism is like it's just so passed down gen to generations and like yeah. people also do not want it to end because what does it mean if black children live long enough to help create a better world that's something people are afraid of. If black children were not killed at such a higher rate, if black people were not killed at such a higher rate, um, it's just like then there would be enough people to mobilize together and actually change the world that we've been told has to be this way. And like there are some people that really prefer keeping things unequal and keeping racism alive because it benefits them. Like, just the death of black children benefits people. Um, like, it's, um, yeah, like, people literally are thriving because of the death of black children and black people. And once equality and equity is, like, reached, who are they going to, you know, um, whose death are they going to benefit from? Like there's mm -hmm. like if it's not white people, then non-black people um, won't be able to benefit from the death of like black people. Um, and when I say this, um, I'm referring to like how um, you know it's like it's not a coincidence that like there's such a high rate of like protesters and activists that are killed. You know, like there's a reason people who want to make the world better are killed intentionally because there's people that are operating to make sure a better world for black people doesn't exist because um because this is also like what what white supremacy created black people can't survive and live um a better life than this if someone else doesn't die like, if Black people are going to be at a level playing field, then some people are just going to have to die, you know? And that's not what Black people made. Like, white supremacy created a way for only one group of people to survive and benefit from this tablet society. And globally, like, Black people suffer because so just so that everyone else gets to benefit from, you know, our death. And I think for me, I think a lot about how, I don't know what world or where I would want to raise black children. I genuinely, I don't know, because it's, uh, I wouldn't raise them in Canada. I don't see myself living in Canada my whole life. It's not really, um, it's, it's not for me, um, but it's just something that I think it's just unfair that like 
I have to think about this before I even have children. Like, this is something I have to think about. Like, where would I raise Black kids? Um, what is, like, a safe enough place for them to be in? Like, how can I make their atmosphere safe? And the sad answer is I, I can't protect them from white supremacy and racism. Like, as much as I'd want to, I can't. And I think that's just the sad reality that we live in. But I think it's, I think in the meantime, like, it would also be the responsibility of like white people and non-black people to really ask themselves, like, how are they being complicit currently in, you know, the adultification of black children? Like, how are they contributing to, you know, the death and pain of like black children? And how can they um, actually address this while we're still here? And yeah, like that's kind of um, what comes to mind with that question. Yeah, like for me, I would say I, I think the uh, seeing that not too long ago colonization, uh, well, has colonization really ended? I don't know, but not longer as as it's been said, you know, colonization's over, you know. Um slave well, there's still sl black slavery in some places, of course, but you know, it's still slavery is like coming to an end and people having a voice. Um, I think like you said, it's gonna take a long time to then uh, find equity. Maybe 400 years, like you said, maybe, you know, maybe even more, you know. So, but I, I, I think for me, I'm as I'm trying to stay positive, I guess. Oh, no, but I'm not saying I'm not saying it's you, no, I'm not saying it's you, you're being negative. So, like, I'm sorry if they, this came out this way. I'm sorry if this came out this way. Um, I'm just saying, like, for me, I'm trying to like see um, the change of the change. If I see that there is some change, it's very slow. And when it's very slow, I think you have to, um, it's the time where we are given the opportunity to speak louder and to explain what's going on. And, um, you know, it's going to take some time, but I hope that we will get to the point where we could look at black children and, you know, let them be children, you know? I mean, it's 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 just it's very it's very easy, but for that we have to be very honest about uh, the history of how black children were treated. We have to be honest about what how we just for our, just for our phone, just the phone that we have. You know, some sometimes we have black children going uh, to in Africa. You know, we have black children going and take minerals for the phones. And how we benefit from that? Uh, how black girls are being kicked out of school at a higher rate, are being given detentions for something that other, you know, non-black children would do, right? And we have to we have to be really honest. And I think it's it's hard to being honest because I think we're still in that stage where we've just gotten out, where we've just not gotten out, but we're, we're starting to get out of that notion. We're starting to discuss about you know racism or you know um a sexism uh, you know misogynoir and all those things so i think it will have to be very honest in order to see a change if we're not honest i don't think we'll get out of it if it makes sense am i making sense i think yeah i don't know i think I'm no you, you are you're clear yeah yeah, yeah so i think so I think it's going to be it's going to be very difficult because I'm sure even having that discussion can trigger you know people, especially non-black people, because they are, maybe they they might see uh, so other people viewing them as you know bad individuals, right? And people don't want to be viewed as that. And at the same time, I do feel that when we talk about there are some non-black people that look at that and, and to agree and there are some that do not agree and even within the black uh, the black population some people might not agree with what we've been talking about you know uh, but then we'll have to be honest about the discussion because if if it was you know if the world was that fair we wouldn't be having that discussion right 
the same exaction we're having. We wouldn't be having that discussion. So it, it's going to trigger people on both sides. And I think we'll have to find a solution where we can reconcile those um, those views or you know discussion because it won't it won't disappear. It's still there. People, children, black children are being you know adopted by still. And uh, yeah, I think I'm rambling. <laughs> but, <You're not>. uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, um, I think this is. Um... It's such a big conversation because um, it goes, it expands so much because um, because of the ways that um, Black children are, are adultified. Um, it's, I think, unpacking how, for example, some people are more have decided that to avoid those situations of Black children being adultified, like they'll intentionally try to um, have, create non-black children, like by intentionally having mixed children so that even though they experience the dosification themselves, they'll intentionally try to create mixed children so that, you know, and like, I think it's interesting how the erasure of black children is the alternative for some people in their mind. Um, and that's like a whole other conversation about like yeah. just black erasure, but yeah, like uh, it, it really um, um, it, it's a it's a happy conversation, but I think it's a it's an important one and a needed one. Needed one, there you go. So I think we've had this. I think it's done. I think we we discussed it to the best of our ability. Again, to other people, uh, these are opinions, of course. I think you know. Uh, we can we we can talk about them and you know and and be kind as we write you know uh, if you if you're against what has been said it's it's important to say like oh I don't think what you guys were saying is right it's okay you know we can have a discussion about it but these are opinions we don't consider us as you know uh, you know I don't know professors or whatever, right? But these are our things, these are our realities and what we've been through and uh, yeah. So guys, thank you for listening to us. I hope you liked the conversation. If you did, uh, like, comment and subscribe. Thank you, Isa, for participating in this discussion with me. And uh, yeah, this is for us. Uh, thank you. Have, have a good evening, good morning, wherever you are. And bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Let me, there we go, hold on, how do we stop that?